You might have been hearing about MCP and wondering what it is. In fact, I did a video recently on how I'm using MCP and it's been doing better than all my other videos, but I realized I never explained what it is. So in this video, I want to tell you what is MCP, why people are excited about it, and how you can set it up for yourself without coding so that you can take full advantage of it. Now let's start with the simplest explanation. What is MCP? Well, if I were to sum it up for my non-technical dad, here's what I would say. MCP allows your AI to get out of its little box and to get access to additional tools and information so that it can be more helpful to you. Now let's use a real example. So let's say you're using cursor while you're coding. So this cursor would be your client. Now, in the client, you can select from different models. Each of these models excel at a different type of task. And these are known as LLMs or large language models. Now let's say you're coding and you want cursor to modify something in your database. Please connect to my database and modify the record John Doe to Joe Schmo. It's going to say that it can't. And that's because it doesn't have access to the database. That information lives outside the context of this client. Likewise, if I asked the client to generate an image for me, it's going to tell me it doesn't have access to image generation because that tool is outside the context of the client. So what can we do? So this is where MCP comes to the rescue. MCP can give your LLM access to these resources. How? By going through a server that handles the communication with these different resources and tools. And the client, in this case cursor, communicates to the server through MCP, which stands for Model Context Protocol. And now that makes a lot more sense, right? Model refers to the large language model or LLM and context gives additional context to your request, whether that is through data or through tools. And protocol means a standardized way of communication between the client and the server. Now take a look at the slide. The server is known as an MCP server and it's got the tough job of securely handling communication with all of these different tools. Now this is hard because each tool has its own unique way of communication known as an API. So the server needs to talk to each of these tools differently. And in addition to that, it needs to do it in a secure way because oftentimes it's handling personal tokens, API keys, and credentials because you wanna use these tools in a personalized context. So that's actually useful to you, right? And so MCP or Model Context Protocol allows the client to ignore all of this complexity and just be able to access all of those tools through the server. Doesn't MCP seem pretty insignificant in the big picture? I mean, it doesn't actually do anything, but this is where you're wrong. It's actually the most important piece of the puzzle because a server is just something that anybody can set up and connect it to any tools that they want. So there are many different servers available each with their own set of resources and tools. You can even set up your own server with your own selection of tools, but it's MCP, this standardized way of communication between the client and the server that makes it possible for your AI client to connect with any MCP server and use its resources and tools. But here's the interesting thing. MCP is not the only standard available. Anthropic announced MCP in late November, 2024, but the reason why everyone's starting to talk about it now is because it's gaining traction and it's becoming the most widely adopted. And that is very, very important because you want a standard that everybody uses. Now that you understand what it is and how it works, let's talk about setting up your own MCP server without coding so that you can be more productive. Now, as we talked about earlier, there are many different MCP servers, all with different connections to different tools that you can use. And in fact, there are directories of MCP servers that you can look through to find something that might be good for you. Now, the thing I always struggle with is knowing who's behind these MCP servers and which ones I can trust. Because don't forget, oftentimes you're giving your own personal tokens or keys to personalize these tools. So that's why I like using Zapier's MCP service because I know exactly who they are. Although they're sponsoring this video, actually I've been personally using their service since 2018 with my own money to integrate all of my different apps and platforms and I've had no trouble with them. So when they told me that they were setting up their own MCP service, I was more than happy to use it because I know I can trust them. So this is what I'm going to show you how to set up. You don't have to touch any code and you can set it up with a free plan as well. So click on the link in the upper right corner or in the description below. You're going to get to this page and you're going to want to click get started. 
You're going to either create a free account or log in if you already have one. Then you're going to be able to set up your own MCP server with just a click of the button. I already have mine set up, so it looks like this, but you're going to have a button here. One click, you're going to be able to set up a server and it's going to give you a URL to that server, which we're going to have to add to our client later. But first, let's connect our new MCP server with the tools that we want to connect to. And the brilliant thing is that Zapier connects to thousands of apps already. It handles all of those integrations securely, all of those unique APIs you don't have to worry about. So click on edit MCP actions. I already have some, but we're going to add a new action because I want to show you just how easy it is. So earlier I asked cursor to generate an image and it couldn't because it didn't have access to Dali. Well, now I am going to set up this MCP server to have that tool so that cursor can use it. I've already got this account set up. I'm going to let AI guess the prompt. It's going to come through the client as you'll see. And then I'm going to hit enable action. And just like that, I've connected a new tool to my MCP server. Now, this is another cool thing that I find with Zapier MCP, honestly, because these other ones in the directories, they have very specific use cases for each of these servers. And like each of them does one thing. But this one, you know, with this, you customize your own. It's kind of like your own personal MCP server. Anyways, now we're going to jump over the client and you know that URL that you had when you first set it up, you're going to connect the client to the server through this URL. Okay, so we're back in our client cursor. Now each client is going to have a slightly different way to add MCP servers. For this one, we want to open up cursor settings. You can use the shortcut key command shift J and then we're going to go down to MCP and we are going to click this one and we are going to add the JSON. Now I don't have the JSON handy because I removed it. So this is a good opportunity to go back here and click on, there are some setup instructions for the client that you're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cursor. And as you can see for cursor here, it says open up the settings using shift command J, navigate to MCP tab, click on add MCP server, which we just did. And we are going to want to add the following to our MCP server list Coming back here. And that URL, we actually have to replace it with our MCP server URL. So I'm going to paste that right here. And then after saving it, I can hit X. You can hit this little refresh icon here. And there should be a little green dot next to Zapier MCP saying that your client is able to communicate with that server. And you can see all of the tools that it has the ability to use. So now I can go back and prompt it to generate an image of a Rook chess piece. And it should be able to detect and use that tool through the Zapier MCP server. And now it's communicating through the model context protocol and you know exactly what is happening because you understand what is going on, right? So now the tool has returned the image to the client and I can open this up and take a look at the response and I can grab the URL or I can just prompt cursor to do something with the image, perhaps download it and integrate it into my project or something like that. There we go. Now that's just one example, but Zapier has integrations with thousands of apps. You can connect the MCP server to your personal Gmail to your calendar, to Slack, to Sheets, and a whole bunch of other apps depending on what you use on a daily basis. And you can make your AI client so much more helpful. Oh, quick question for you. What is the most useful thing that you've gotten AI to do for you? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. It should be really interesting to read everyone's comments. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.